Hello and welcome to the orientation for this Philosophy 111 course. The title of this course is Cultural and Ethical Issues in Science and Technology. And I'm excited to work with you this semester on these, um, on these issues and, and this program. And I want you to know that this is a fully online asynchronous course. So being a fully online course means all of the exams and everything else that we do are, is fully online. Um, there are no actual class meetings in the class, so everything is done online on Blackboard and on Discord, as I'll explain. And the course is fully asynchronous as well, which means that we don't meet at a set time for lectures. The lectures are all online. I've posted them and you'll be able to look at them um, as part of your as part of your weekly tasks. So we'll be meeting together. We'll be texting. We'll be we'll be meeting and and um, and getting to, together in different formats, but it won't be a synchronous sort of class, meaning we won't have actual hours allotted to class time together, um, but we'll be meeting asynchronously um, in various formats on the, on the platforms that we have. Um, and I'll explain that to you um, in this course. So, so that there are no lectures, there are no class times, but it's really important to um, as I'll explain, to keep up with the work on a week by week basis. There are tasks that must be done, as you'll see on a weekly basis. Um, so you have to keep up with those week by week and do the work uh, weekly and check in several times a week to make sure that you're keeping up with things. So I'll explain all that in this introduction and I'll explain how this course is going to work what assignments you have to do and how we're all going to um, work together as, as over the course of the next semester. All right, so just a little bit about the, the content and what we're going to be learning in this course. It's organized broadly into two parts. They're, these are theory and practical issues. So in the first part of the course, and this will be weeks one through six, We'll be looking at the theory of science and technology and here we'll be looking at theories which try to explain uh, the role of science and technology how they work how they're integrated with um, other parts of society and the world we live in we'll look at theories like actor network theory we'll look at social constructivism um, and other theories which explain and, and help us get a sense of of technology and science and, and how they're sort of parts of our lives, parts of history, and how they work to generate lots of um, lots of powerful effects and consequences for our lifestyle and the world we live in. And in the second part of the course, we're going to be looking at practical issues um, in the application of science and technology. So here we'll be looking carefully at issues like uh, race and technology. And we'll be looking at how gender intersects with technology um, and we'll be looking at class issues and technology so economic inequality um, and how technology is, is a the sort of current status of technology is a part of um, is a part of these kind of um, problems and concerns that people bring with them to their investigation of the social world um, so we'll, we'll look at a number of practical issues and and we'll be sort of trying to get a sense of how, how they work. So it's not just it's not just a course in theory or learning in, information. I, I'm really interested in, in this course um, in seeing what you think about some of these practical issues and looking at your your sort of creative responses to them. Um, and as you'll see in a lot of the assignments in this course, I'm looking for you, um, the, you as students to have a kind of creative and, and thoughtful response to these problems and to help think sort of work through solutions um, as well as understand what some of the problems are that we're going to be working through um, in these areas as, as well. So those are the sort of big two parts of the course that we'll be working through. All right, so two really important things that are posted on Blackboard. Um, in our Blackboard shell are the syllabus and the course map. So they're in the course information folder on Blackboard and the course map shows you the tasks that must be completed on a weekly basis together with all the readings and assignments. So the course map has the, the deadlines, the, um, the dates when you need to complete things, whether it's the discussion board, uh, the final exam, the paper. 
It has all those dates and it also has details and all the readings and all the assignments and any other tasks that might need to be completed. So make sure you print out the course map, keep it with you, consult it regularly. Um, and that's the answer to any questions you have about assignments, when they're due, uh, what needs to be done and when. All of that information is in the course map. So the syllabus has information on requirements that must be completed um, in order to pass the course. And it also has an outline of the weekly reading and themes, so you'll know what to expect. You'll know where we are in week one and week two, what we're gonna be doing in week three and four. Syllabus has all that information um, and a list of the course requirements as well. And here are the course requirements, um, and you can find them on the syllabus as, as well. So in this course, there's a midterm and a final exam, which are each 15%. There's a four to five page formal paper um, and an essay, which is 25%. The discussion board participation that we're gonna do on Blackboard on the discussion board, and that will be 15%. Um, the weekly blogs, those we'll do on Discord, as I'll explain, those are 10%. The weekly quizzes, also on Blackboard, are 15%. And Discord participation, um, that's 5%. That's a little incentive to, um, to incentivize you to, um, to post on Discord, to answer queries, to, um, to keep up to date, to, to respond to people, to respond to me. Um, and to be active on Discord. And if you do that, I'll give you, um, I'll give you that 5%. So those are the um, course requirements and everything on which you'll be graded during the course. This is what the course map looks like or the course guide template, same thing. Um, it's organized like this and you'll see it's organized into topics and then there's readings, resources, presentations assignments and activities, things that you have to do and the assessments, uh, which are usually the quizzes and the essays. Um, so if, if you'll see, if you see on week zero, that's before uh, week one starts, um, there's, there's always some things to do. There's an orientation uh, and this, this is the course orientation right here. Setting up your blog, signing up with Turnitin um, and those are the things that will, will be um, important in week zero. And in week one, uh, you can see when we actually start getting into the material. Um, our first topic is introduction to the philosophy of technology. Um, and you can see the readings there in the, in the next column. And then the activities and assignments. There's a discussion board. There's a, a discussion board response. Um, there'll be a blog as, as well. You can't see that on this page. Um, and a quiz as, as well. So that's typically the way um, the assignments will, will work and the course guide template, the course map will show you everything you need to know to do well in the course, um, all of the deadlines, all of the dates and when things are due. So it's a very um, handy thing to have around. Okay, so this is a 15 week semester at CUNY. Uh, we go from week zero through week 14. And the work, as I said, must be completed on a week by week basis. Okay, so it's not, it's not the case that you can sort of, you know, you can take a couple of weeks off and then you can get back and complete all the work that you've missed. Um, that's not how this course works. It's not how asynchronous courses generally work. Generally, you have to keep up with the work um, on a weekly basis. And that's what this course is gonna involve as, as well. Week zero is gonna involve doing all the preliminary work for the course. So everything to get you um, to where you need to be so you can get up and running in week one, things like signing up for Turnitin um, and posting an introduction on Discord. All of those things that you'll see are week zero tasks. Week seven and 14 are exam weeks. Um, so those are the weeks we'll be doing the midterm and the final. So all of the weeks outside of those weeks are regular weeks that will involve completing regular weekly tasks. And there's, there's always a set number of tasks that you must complete on a weekly basis. Those are usually the discussion board, the blog, um, and the quiz. Those are the sort of set weekly tasks. All right, 
So for week zero, what, what you have to do, and you'll see this in the introductory announcements on Blackboard as well, you have to sign into the Discord server for this class. Um, you'll see the, the login for the um, code for the, the code login for Discord. You'll see that in the introductory announcement, and you'll also see it on the syllabus, which is in, in Blackboard. So sign on to Discord, introduce yourself on Discord. You'll see there's a um, there's a channel for introdu introductions and introducing yourself. Post your favorite meme, whatever it is, in the off topic channel. Register with Turnitin as stated in course information. You'll find the codes you need there in course information. Um, and get hold of the textbook for this course, Readings in the Philosophy of Technology by David Kaplan. Uh, that's the second edition, um, and that's the book we're going to be using for the course. All right, so weekly tasks each week, except, as I said, the exam weeks 7 and 14. Uh, you'll complete a reading. There, there's a reading to be done, and it will usually be two different articles. Um, so there's a substantial amount of reading here that you're going to have to get through on a weekly basis. And the lecture, the reading material is the sort of um, the main sort of content for the course, along with the lecture presentation. So as, as well as the two lectures, uh, you'll also have a lecture presentation to watch. Um, the link for that will be on Blackboard. Um, and I'll also put those links on Discord. So when you re do the reading, you should read each article at least twice, once to get a general idea of what it is about, and a second time more carefully to understand the specific arguments. Um, the first time you're sort of going through and sort of just getting a map of the lay of the land, where everything is, where things are happening. And the second time you look at it, you're trying to focus on the arguments you picked out the first time and you're trying to get clear on what's being said in those kind of key moments in, in the article. So do your best. It'll take time. It'll take patience and you'll you'll have to get used to it if you haven't read philosophy before. But it's really important to um, to try to read carefully and to try to um, to try to do your best with, with the reading to make it um, to, to, to try and get as much as you can before you go on to do the assignments. Um, so it's important to do the reading and to watch the lecture presentation before completing, uh, before trying to complete the weekly assignments. So the first um, assignment, weekly assignment, the quizzes, the quizzes must be completed by the end of Saturday of each week, um, as you'll see the deadlines there in the course map. Each quiz is made up of 10 questions based on the weekly reading. So do the weekly reading and watch the lecture before attempting to complete the quiz. Um, I would advise doing the quiz last as I'll, I'll show you in my sort of breakdown of tasks in a little while. The second task is the discussion board, which you'll do on Blackboard. Each week you, you'll write a post on the discussion board forum for that particular week. Um, the question is on the discussion board is on Blackboard. The question or prompt is in assignments in the weekly folder. Um, so each week I'll give you a prompt or a question, which is the sort of question for your discussion board post, and your post will be a response to that prompt. Your discussion board posts must be substantive. There'll be a minimum of 100 words and should be a thoughtful response to the task given in the question. Posts are due by the end of Friday each week. And again, you'll find the, that deadline in the course map. And if you're ever confused about deadlines, just go back and take a look at the course map. You must also write a response to a classmate on the discussion board. That's part of the discussion board assignments as, as well. So make sure your response makes a substantive point. It's not just saying well done or good job, but make sure that your response as well as your post contributes in some way to the learning of the class. Okay, so discussion board is our is our sort of class participation, our class contribution, and our class attendance. Um, so it's important that you keep up with it and do it on a weekly basis, um, and do the posts when they are um, when they are live and everybody else is is kind of doing them on on the on the sort of on the regular weekly schedule. So discussion board posts are your class attendance um, and class participation in this course. 
Posts must be completed on a week by week basis to ensure adequate attendance and class contribution in order to pass the course. Um, so if you miss a discussion board, you're effectively absent for that week, as you would be if it was a, a as if we were in a classroom and you sort of didn't show up for the class. Um, that's the equivalent in Blackboard is, is sort of missing the discussion board. Um, so it's important to sort of to be there regularly as a sort of class participation and attendance feature. Um, and also to sort of keep up with the discussion, which is going to be about the material and is going to be helpful for sort of getting a handle um, on what we're talking about and the themes we're discussing for that week. So the third um, weekly assignment is the blog posts. And each week you'll write a post on your blog of on a blog of 100 words or more. Um, a question or prompt is available again each week. So like for the discussion board, I'll give you a prompt. Um, although I'm less sort of, um, you know, I'm, I don't care as much how, what you focus on in the blog as long as you write 100 words, as long as it's about the course material. Um, you know, you have more freedom on the blog to write about what you want. So if you want to just write about things you're interested in and that we've been talking about, that's that's OK in the blog as well. And you'll also write the blog on Discord rather than Blackboard. And you'll see that uh, I'm going to set up blog channels there. There's a the, there will be um, channels for you to write the blogs. Um, so that will be a sort of collective um, a collective channel and we can all sort of see and interact as, as we sort of look at the blogs um, each week. OK, so the login for Discord, which we'll be using in this class, the, um, the third party software called Discord. And the login is in the first class announcement and also on the syllabus. So blogs will be done on Discord, office hours um, as, as well, or student hours if you want to, if, if you prefer. So anytime you want to drop in and ask me something, um, you, you can do that as long as I'm around, of course. And text and voice chat options are also available. Um, so there, there's a lot of um, good ways to interact. So like I said, the 5% um, is to get the 5% of the grade that's for Discord participation is to give you an incentive to use it, to reply to others and to ask questions, to be active um, on Discord. And I'm hoping this will be this will allow us to create some community for the class. Um, as it's an asynchronous class, I find this really helpful for sort of getting us together, finding out what's on your mind and what you're thinking as we go through the course um, and just getting a sort of vibe of, of what's happening. Um, so I hope I hope you'll, you'll use it um, productively and and um, actively and, and that this will be a sort of a, a good part of the learning experience. Okay, the weekly schedule. So now that you know the weekly tasks, um, what I would suggest for sort of how to organize your week is something like this. So start with the weekly readings. <coughs> Excuse me, like I said, there are two readings um, and I'd start trying to read those and assimilate them. And when you've done the readings, you can, you can go to the video lectures, uh, which will be explaining the readings and they'll sort of give you a deeper basis on the reading and you can sort of have you can be watching the lectures in conjunction with sort of looking at the readings and working with the two together. So doing the readings and then watching the video lectures should give you a sort of good handle on the readings that you're confident you know some things and you can talk about some things in our themes for that particular week. So when you've completed that you can go to the discussion board um, and complete the discussion board post. And you can go to Discord and complete the blog post. And then also on Blackboard, you'll be able to complete the quiz. Um, and like I said, I'd recommend doing that as the very last thing that you do. So once you've done everything else and you've assimilated as much and sort of got as much as you can from, from the readings and the lectures and your posts and looking at other people's posts um, and finding out, sort of getting a sense of what's important and what the themes are. Um, then you can do the quiz and, and do your best to answer the 10, um, 10 questions on the quiz. It's multiple choice and um, 
and those kind of questions. So it should, um, and you'll have about half an hour, 30 minutes to, to complete the quiz each week. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the midterm and final. The midterm exam is in week seven. The final exam will be in week 14. And both are two hour exams, which will involve answering three essay type questions. So they're essay type in the sense that they're, you know, you'll have space to sort of write and compose your own answer. They're not multiple choice questions. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, you'll have approximately 40 minutes for each question. So, you know, you take a bit of time for thinking and composing, and then you'll have about 30 minutes to write your answer. So I'm not looking for grammar. I'm not looking for good English. I'm not looking for those kind of things. I'm just looking for your the content and your understanding of the material and your critical thinking in responding to the question. So typically the questions will involve you sort of responding critically, um, responding creatively to a question about the material um, and taking a point of view on the material that we've looked at for the course. Um, the, the midterm obviously will be focused on the first part of the course, which is the theoretical part. And the final will be more focused on the um, on the practical sort of questions that we'll deal with in the second part of the course. All right, so we'll also complete an essay or formal paper in this course, which will be four to five pages long, and it'll be submitted via the website Turnitin. And you'll all sign up with Turnitin.com. Um, the instructions for that are in course information. <coughs> Excuse me, the question for the paper will be available after the midterm exam in week eight, and it's due at the end of week 12. Um, so at the, at the end of week 12, you'll submit the papers um, to turn it in. The paper will give you the opportunity to demonstrate the depth of your knowledge about the learning material in the course. So I'll distribute questions after the midterm and you'll have the chance to um, to go into depth about a particular subject or issue that we're looking at in the course and to show, demonstrate and show what, what you know about that issue and sort of show what you've learned. So it gives you a chance to sort of showcase your knowledge. And that's really what the former paper is all about. Um, it's 25% of the grade, so it's um, it's a significant chunk. So I want you to take it seriously and to, to do your best to really dig into the material in depth when you do the paper. Okay, so some advice from my experience of uh, years of online teaching. Set a weekly schedule and stick to it. So set out at the beginning of the semester when you're going to do your online philosophy work, set out the times a day you're going to get online, set out the times a day you're going to do the reading, when are you going to look at the lectures, when are you going to do the discussion board. So have your schedule for when you can do your online work and do your best to stick to it. Um, you know, things get in the way, it won't, you won't always be able to stick to it and, you know, things will get messy at some point. Um, but do your best to set up a schedule and be, try and be disciplined about it so that you, you know, you can sort of have a good sort of basis for doing well in the course. Um, and if things get off track, you know, you can get back when you're ready to the schedule and sort of get back to your routine and, and, um, and get back to doing your thing on a weekly basis. So log into Blackboard and Discord several times per week to see um, you have to see what the assignments are, you have to get the readings, you have to watch the lectures, you have to do the discussion board and the blog, etc. Um, so that, that's important to stay connected on a regular basis, both at the early times, the beginnings of the week and later in the week when you're doing all the assignments. Make sure you work at a place with a reliable internet connection, that's very important. Um, to have that in internet connection. If anything happens in the quizzes or, or you get sort of kicked out, just send me an email and I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll reset and let, let you back in. Um, but things, you know, if you don't have a reliable connection, be aware that, um, you know, those kind of things might happen when you're doing quizzes or, or exams um, that you're going to get sort of kicked out occasionally. But it's okay if you email me, I'll reset it and everything will be fine. 
make connections with other students and keep each other on track. Um, that's a really sort of that's a really helpful thing if you're connected with with others and, and you're you're helping each other with with homework or to think through um, some of the issues or to keep on track. Um, that that always ma makes a big difference to student learning if you make connections with each other. And finally, keep in touch with me, your professor. If you're going to miss a deadline, uh, let let me know. I'm always flexible and we can work work things out. And I I really do take mental health very seriously um, in this class and in all classes. And I, I I work with you if you're having problems, if if you're if you're struggling, if you can't get through something, please get in touch and we can we can work something out and we can find a, a plan to make it work for you. Um, so so I want you to know that you can come to me and you can talk to me about issues that you're having in the class um, and things that are making it difficult for you. Um, and I'll be prepared to work with you and talk with you and make um, make a plan or, or, or sort of make make something so that we can sort of work together and get past what's happening um, and make sure that you're able to successfully complete the course and, and get on with your um, get on with your education. So, um, yeah, that's really important. Keep in touch as much as you can. All right. And finally, if you need to contact me, uh, here's my email. Here's my phone. All of these are on the um, on Blackboard as, as well and on the syllabus. Um, my office and the uh, the, the on-site address there, um, although since this is an asynchronous course, like I said, you won't actually be um, coming to campus for classes. Um, so but keep a note of this in information and if you need to reach me, um, you can contact me at any time. And finally, good luck in the course. Um, I hope you find it a rewarding experience. I, ho I hope you do well and uh, I hope we have a have a really good relationship working together this semester.